The next category of winners is for accountability and accessibility. For any democracy to thrive and survive, there must exist a level of transparency and accountability between the citizens and their government. This award recognizes offices that hold themselves accountable to their constituents by providing clear and relevant information on their work and performance and publicly acknowledge metrics for that performance. The winners in this category demonstrated accountability to their constituents. To present to the winners for the Democracy Award, please welcome to the stage Stefania Yankov. I, I messed that up, Stefania. Yankov, it's okay. Oh my okay. gosh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I said today, bless the people who have the easy names, right? Um, anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, Thank you, Jen, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you, Brad. Thank you both for your leadership. Thank you to the board and the staff and for everyone on coming bright and early on this beautiful rainy day. Uh, I'm Stefania. I'm here on behalf of CMF. I'm the board secretary, and I'm also part of the federal policy team at Waymo. Uh, Waymo is an autonomous driving technology company with a mission to be the world's most trusted driver. We've been doing this over 15 years. We started as the Google self-driving car project in 2009. Um, and I'm proud to share that autonomous vehicles are no longer science fiction. They're on the roads. Uh, we're now, uh, announced, we now announced our fifth major city and we've been operating to the public on public roads, a fully autonomous ride hailing service since 2020. So, um, we're really focused on building uh, the Waymo driver to improve access to mobility while also reducing the thousands of lives that are lost to traffic accidents every year. Um, and we've come a really long way. Uh, as of last month, we've provided over 2 million paid trips to the public. Uh, we've driven over 20 million miles autonomously and we've done testing in over 13 states. Uh, we're now providing over 100,000 paid fully autonomous trips a week. And I'm particularly honored to be presenting this next award because accessibility is the reason I left the public sector and joined Waymo. Um, this is really truly life-changing technology that's providing our users independence and reliability and a consistent experience. And it's my wish that all of you get to experience uh, autonomous vehicles in one of our markets. Um, I'm also really proud to have some of our friends from the National Federation of the Blind here. Um, we've worked together from the beginning um, on partners on accessibility. And so our honorees also in this category also share uh, my passion and commitment to both accountability and accessibility. And I'm so proud to present uh, the Democracy Award for Constituent Accountability and Accessibility to Reps Ayanna Presley and Gus Bilirakis, uh, Bailey Ware on behalf of Gus Bilirakis. Please welcome to the stage. Good morning. Uh, it is wonderful to be with all of you. Um, many are probably unaware, so I've been in Congress now for six years, but uh, prior um, to my uh, serving on the Boston City Council and then being elected to Congress, I was an aide uh, for 16 years. Uh, six years in the House and a near decade in the United States Senate. So this award is deeply meaningful to me and every member of my team. Um, because I know firsthand that the success of a congressional office relies on the vision of the member and the dedicated work and personal sacrifice of the team day in and day out. So in the spirit of that, although they uh, prefer to be behind the scenes, um, as a proud mama, I guess, I will embarrass them and ask them to come to the stage and stand with me. So I want to invite up I want to invite up my um, Chief of Staff, Sarah Grome, and my Acting District Director, Eddie Rupia. 
It's only right that they accept this award alongside me. They are the humble, behind the scenes players. So again, I know they're, they uh, are uncomfortable in this moment, but it's deeply important to me that they are given their flowers because they are truly who makes this work possible daily. I'm so grateful for my entire team back home in Massachusetts and here in Washington who work alongside me daily. I always say that, you don't work for me, you work with me. Thank you to the Congressional Management Foundation and the entire CMF team for this honor. And congratulations uh, to all of my colleagues who have been nominated and honored today. When I was elected to Congress in 2018, uh, we held a ceremonial swearing in in community at one of our incredible community colleges, Roxbury Community College. And we, um, my team and I worked together to write a community pledge um, that we would take together because I believe that we have to do this work in symbiotic partnership with community. And so it was a way to affirm our collective commitment to this work and we set out together to be disruptive for good and innovative for equity. And we knew and believed in the transformative potential of government, but we also knew that many folks in our district, the Massachusetts 7th, saw government as a series of broken promises and harmful policies. And so we wanted to, to foster and build that trust from the ground up and set a standard for something I characterize as cooperative governing. So over the past nearly three terms in office, we have built with intention equity and access into the work that we do daily. Our goal is accessibility in every sense. So of course we hold town halls and coffees with the Congresswoman in person and virtually. We make intentional choices about including, uh, about access including on-site language translation, American Sign Language or CART captions on site. We also produce materials digitally and in hard copy in multiple languages. And we think about the barriers to access that people face when it comes to government services and prioritize holding events that are close to public transit. We hold remote office hours where folks can access casework support at their local lunch spot or a library. And for our community events, uh, we provide uh, free food, uh, usually uh, contracting a local uh, woman or minority owned small business. Uh, we make it a practice to provide resources like on site childcare and to encourage people from every walk of life and every family model uh, to engage and to participate. I can't emphasize enough that part of a commitment to accessibility is also being willing to take feedback to do more and to do better. And we have learned so much over the last six years and we're constantly working to make our office and federal resources more accountable and more accessible. I've always maintained that the people closest to the pain should be the closest to the power, driving and informing the policy making. That is the true practice of this cooperative governing that we've created. And so in addition to going the extra mile when it comes to follow ups and building relationships with the folks we represent, we also encourage and train our staff to identify casework and mail program content for our legislative pipeline. So one such example of this, and I also think it speaks to the power of one, that a constituent set an e set a email in, um, cited a problem, and we worked for two years in close partnership with them, and that ultimately became a defining piece of legislation within our portfolio and a bill that was signed into law. It's the Post-Disaster Mental Health Act. So a constituent, Manya uh, Chalinski, who was impacted by the Boston Marathon bombing, had trouble accessing post-disaster resources. FEMA programs were in place for those who lost limbs or experienced physical injuries, but if you were in need of psychological first aid, and the thing about trauma, because I've worked in that space for a very long time, um, it doesn't always immediately present. Um, it manifests in everyone's differently. So for those who suffered psychologically after surviving the attack, they couldn't access mental or behavioral health services from FEMA. So we worked in collaborative fashion with survivors and advocates to draft responsive legislation to get this technical change successfully signed into law by President Biden, ensuring that folks that are impacted by various disasters, whether you're talking about extreme weather events or domestic terrorism or other major events, that they would be able to get all types of care 
to heal and to recover. As I close, I just want to underscore that it is an honor to get to do this work every day, building trust and leaning in to understanding the daily challenges that our constituents are navigating is an ongoing practice. I take and my team takes this responsibility very seriously. Um, we are people's lifeline, their hope line at a time when there's often a real deficit of trust in, in, in government and institutions. My love for my district is deep and abiding. I'm a better representative because of every conversation, every interaction, every engagement that I've had with the people who call the Massachusetts seventh home. Thank you to my neighbors and constituents for entrusting me with this awesome responsibility and for trusting me with your stories, your struggles and your aspirations. And I look forward to continuing to build on our office's best practices in the 119th Congress. And I want to say um, to, to Sarah and to Eddie, um, in our organization, we have an official poem. Um, I love poetry. And it's by Marge Piercy. It's a poem called To Be of Use. Um, if you don't know it, look it up. Uh, I think it perfectly encapsulates the work that we do. But my favorite line is the closing line, which says, um, the pitcher cries for water to carry and the person for work that is real. I'm so grateful to my team for doing this real, a deeply transformative and meaningful work every single day. It's a great honor. Thank you.